Our Earth is home to millions of different species. And with so many, it's important that scientists make sure that they're talking about the same one. They do this by classifying them into different groups. I'm Emma, and today we're learning about classification. In the 18th century, Carl Linnaeus developed a classification system that is still being used today. It groups living things based on their structure and characteristics. He came up with these levels of hierarchy, with the highest and biggest at the top. It goes kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. This is something you need to know in the correct order, so let's make a mnemonic for it. You should try making your own with something that's really personal to you. You just take the first letter of each word and make it into a silly sentence. Here's an example. Keep ponds clean or frogs get sick. No. In the exam, you just write your letters out again and then revert them back to the scientific words. The last two levels of classification make up the binomial classification of a species, which is just its two part name. Remember, bi means two. So if you're asked for the species name or binomial name, you always give the genus and the species part. For example, humans are Homo sapiens and wolves are Canis lupus. You'll be given the information needed to work this out. Notice that the words are written in italics and the genus name always starts with a capital letter. There's now a new level of classification developed by an American scientist called Carl Woese. This new level is called domains and it is above kingdoms. So we could modify our mnemonic to say, definitely keep ponds clean or frogs get sick. He and his team came up with this new classification due to improvements in biology. First of all, microscopes have really improved a lot over the years and we can now see a lot more detail of the internal structures of cells. Secondly, our understanding of biochemical processes that happen in living things has also really progressed since the 18th century. Domains can be split into three different groups and you need to know the names of them. First of all, we've got the archaea. These are primitive forms of bacteria that live in extreme environments, e.g. hot vent bacteria that can survive really high temperatures. The next domain we've got are bacteria, also known as the true bacteria. The third domain is eukaryota. You'll have learned about eukaryotic cells in the first topic of biology, and hopefully you remember the four kingdoms, fungi, protists, animals, and plants. And if you're wondering about the prokaryotes, which you also learned about in that topic, then archaea and bacteria both encompass these type of cells. Finally, I've got a little tip for you. To remember Woese's name, we can split it up. Maybe he was woeful, which means sad, when he first saw Linnaeus's classification system and realized something was wrong. And now he's saying, see, look, I fixed it. Maybe it'll help. Question time. Pause the video, give the questions a go and press play to go over the answers. One, name the person credited for the binomial classification of living things. This is Linnaeus. Two, fill in the missing gaps. I suggest you start with writing out your mnemonic letters and we had definitely keep ponds clean or frogs get sick. Now we just work out what the letters are. So it's K for kingdom, after P is C for class, then O for order, and then G for genus. Three, circle the words above that are used in binomial classification of an organism. Well, it's always the last two, the genus and the species names. And four, Name the three domains and the scientist who developed this level of classification. Archaea, bacteria, and eukaryote. And the scientist who came up with it is Woese. So, how did you do in the questions? Learn how to interpret evolutionary trees in my next video. And if you find this useful, please subscribe. Thanks and bye!